Lothar, I've been all my life interested in existence. Why is there existence? And in your book, Infinite Potential, you talk about the elementary unit of existence. Uh, that's fascinating. You, you, you call it ET. Uh, why do you call it ET? Um, why do I call it ET? It's, it's related to this phenomenon that when, when you leave an elementary particle alone, uninteracted, it becomes a wave. How should you describe that? One um, of the traditional descriptions is to speak of a wave-particle duality. Well, to me, that's unacceptable. Um, there are different states. You have, you have basic elementary entities. So, I call that entity ET. I call it ET because they can appear as elementary things, ET, or as elementary forms or thoughts, ET. Well, let's, let's understand that. The elementary thing, I mean, that's a particle. It's, it's a, a, it, it's a particle. So if we say the most I indivisible particle, uh, electron or... Uh, uh, Atom, molecule yeah. even. Yeah, but, but those are not indivisible. Those are not the elementary... The oh, but existence. when you leave them alone in a vacuum, they become a wave. They also do that. There, there are interference phenomena with... with Molecules that have 60 carbon atoms. Okay, but, but you're saying that becomes an elementary unit of existence if it has 60 carbon atoms? Yes. Yes, it, be, it becomes an ET, meaning uh, it, it can be an elementary thing or an elementary thought-like, a thought, because it becomes a form. You're defining thought as a wave? The wave is a form, is a pattern of information, so you can say it's thought-like, so okay. I just say, okay, let's call it. Okay, so you're going from wave to the probability of the wave to the probability of the wave being information, information and information being thought resident like. is thought-like. Okay, so, the, so you're abbreviating that with thought. Wave yeah, and so thought. you call it ET. Why do I think it's a better description? Because it, it wants to do away with this interpretation that people say observation creates reaction, uh, reality. No, A, there is always reality, an ET, elementary thought, and it doesn't need observation, it becomes spontaneously another ET, an elementary thing. And the, and the general term is NTT, so it's also an ET in there. <laughs> okay, so, so you're having the elementary uh, unit be a wave, an elementary unit being a particle, and they are interchangeable, and you're calling the, the, uh, the wave the thought, and right. the particle the thing. So both right. are ET, elementary yeah. thought, elementary particle. No, calling them a thought is already, you know, making all the steps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, making all the steps. Patterns yeah, yeah. of information. Right, right, you have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, very good. So, I mean, and, and does, does that mean they are the most fundamental units of existence? I mean, that's what you're saying. Well, you can't get lower than that. You can't, you can't say what's beneath that. No. Well, you could have smaller particles and so, but they would behave the same way. Maybe. Electrons do, atoms do, but the electrons in them alone do, and the protons do. There's some theories that say that you can get below uh, quantum physics in string theory or other ways of going about it, where quantum physics is the derivative of something deeper. Then you have a different uh, ele elementary unit of existence. You cannot get away from the observations, which are of wave-like entities. No matter how you explain them, the observations are facts. They are wave-like properties. Okay. And they are particle-like properties. Now you can try to explain them in all kinds of waves. The observations are still there. They are wave-like things, particle-like things. Okay, and so what does that tell us about the nature of existence? What's the most fundamental part of existence? The most fundamental part is the non-visible part out of which the visible world comes. All right, so tell me about that non-visible part. Well, the non-visible part, since it is non-empirical, I can't tell you details. We can describe it as a realm of forms, as something that is thought-like. Um, then, you know, the idea is, if it is thought-like, the thoughts hang together, they make a wholeness, like thoughts in our mind. Um, 
these are descriptions, but, but that's about it. And you're talking about forms. Now, Plato talked about forms like the perfect cube and, and the, that, that the cubes we find on, in, in, in existence are uh, a, a poor uh, representations of the perfect form of a cube. Right. And then you're talking also about potentialities, all the different ways that atoms and molecules could possibly be in different quantum states or whatever. I mean, how do those relate to each other? Forms yeah. and potentialities. I think you can, you know, you can understand Plato by thinking that all things somehow exist in a realm of forms as a, as a perfect entity. And then they come out, you know, uh, reproduced many times. So whether there is one form of an atom in a cosmic realm and it reproduces many times, or whether there is one form for each atom, I don't know. I, I might get carried away and say, you existed as a form in the cosmic realm before you were born. And you may still exist there after you die. You may come back. So, um, and, and but I mean, that is kind of carried. <laughs> but but, but you know, understanding that, that means that it's not just me or you, it's just every possibility. Every possibility. So it could have been me with a, yeah. a, a, a thumb a little bit fatter. That's another possibility. Yes. And you know, your personality isn't only the original form, but the environment where you grew up sure, and so sure. on. So it will be different. But maybe we like some people so much because they are actualization of the same form, uh, even though they are uh, different people. Uh, <laughs> but now we get carried yeah. away. So. Yeah. But, but at, at, at bedrock, um, what, therefore, is fundamental? Most fundamental is the realm of forms. The visible world comes out of it. We can have some ideas about what the forms are that they're hanging together. It is reasonable to think that they form a wholeness because the visible world is coherent and not a chaos of all kinds of unconnected actualizations.